The rise of big business and industry in the United States during the late 19th century brought with it new opportunities and vast wealth. It also sparked a debate about wealth and economic equality that continues even today. In this video lecture, we will examine the benefits and drawbacks of the industrial age. Let's start with the positive. First of all, large businesses are able to practice what is known as economies of scale, meaning that they can produce so much of a product that the cost goes down. A great example of this would be Henry Ford's use of the assembly line to make the Model T Ford. By using the assembly line to mass produce so many cars, Ford was able to decrease the price of the car so that more people could afford one. In this sense, the industrial age raised the standard of living. More products were available and they were less expensive. The growth of the factory system and assembly lines led to an increase in the use of unskilled labor and provided jobs for millions of people and as we discussed earlier, the population of the country was growing significantly. The rise of big business also had some not so positive aspects. Although there were many new jobs available, working conditions were often poor and wages were generally low. This contributed to a widening income gap. For every Rockefeller and Carnegie, there were millions of people struggling to get by. One could argue the fairness of such income disparity, but one thing that many economists agree on is that large income inequality is generally not good for the economy. While there were notable economic benefits to the rise of large corporations, as corporations grew in power, many small businesses were not able to compete with them and were often forced out of business. Another drawback to the rise of big corporations is that although it can lead to tremendous economic growth, it also exposes the economy to the danger of larger and more widespread economic depressions and recessions. As corporations consolidated into ever larger ones, the failure of one industry or corporation had a much larger ripple effect on the rest of the economy. The debate over the Industrial Revolution in America has raised questions about the government's role in the economy and how much the government should regulate economic behavior. A popular philosophy at the time was social Darwinism. Social Darwinists believed that the success of some businesses and the failure of others was simply a result of the natural laws of selection and survival of the fittest. In their view, monopolies were not a bad thing for the economy. Large monopolies could operate on economies of scale to provide the best and cheapest products for the consumer. Social Darwinists argued that the government should not regulate the economy at all. Those people who did not benefit as much from the new economy held a different viewpoint. Advocates for more government regulation argued that large corporations used unfair methods to drive out competition and create monopolies. They pointed to the worsening working and even environmental conditions as evidence that the government had a responsibility to level the economic playing field. On one end of the extreme, some favored a strictly laissez-faire attitude in which the government did not regulate the economy at all. On the other end of the extreme, some favored complete government regulation and even government ownership of major industries or communism. The American economy is somewhere between the two. The argument about where exactly the government should fall on that scale was and continues to be one of the big questions of the age. And now, armed with all this new information, you too can participate in that discussion. Until then, we'll see you later.